Good afternoon, everybody. By my clock, it's right on the hour. For me, it's 11. I'm here in Mountain Time. I know most of you are on the East Coast, so it's one o'clock. I hope you had a good lunch and you're not too sleepy. I'm Jenny Sauer. Welcome to the End User Tools present Spotted Lantern Fly Trapping and Visual. And in parentheses, it's important by state. Data collection using ArcGIS field maps. What a title, huh? But it does cover everything we're going to talk about today. So um, Spotted Lantern Fly has just released a much anticipated and a little bit delayed SLF trapping and visual surveys by state map. And what this means by state is your state has its own map shared to a group with your state's name. And so you will only in your state have access to view and record data pertaining to your state. So it does restrict you down to your state. Visual surveys, there are two maps. There's this one visual by state. And there is also a nationwide visual data collection map. And the nationwide visual is used where there is no known presence, none, no known presence. And so that should be recording negatives only. So this map, the state visual is used to record where there is a known SLF presence. That being said, that's about as deep as I go into survey protocol. And so many of you have answered this poll that I kind of put through in here. Thank you for those of you who did that. As you can see here, there's a, a survey protocol aspect to collecting data. You want to make sure you've got that. Reviewing how to use the device you're using, the app we're using, and then this course here, I'll kind of take you to the tip of the iceberg on how to use that app. But your SLF multi-state coordinator, Matthew Travis, is responsible for communicating the survey protocol part. I'm not your expert there. And this training will just be that quick stop to help ensure that you know how to use that application as it was designed to collect the data. There's two um, resources here that I want to throw in the chat. So two little links here that I'm throwing in the chat. I want to show you what those are now that you have them at your fingertips. So the first link here is this mobile data collection tools page. And I'm giving you this because there's a couple things. The top half of this page is all document support and the bottom is a video gallery and you may have noticed i'm recording this training we did this training on tuesday of this week and so this is the second time i'm doing it and uh, actually i'm hoping this one will be the better one we had uh, one of the layers wasn't loading very well so it should be working better today the reference layer but this video that we are making here today together is going to end up here in this video gallery so if you feel like you missed something or um, or you just can't remember or you want to just refer back to the video it'll show up here there's categories so if you pick pest program it'll show up here under all the pest program categories or you can search here in this little search box just slf will get you somewhere if i do it now you'll see we've had a couple slf trainings already this year that are sitting here but that'll show up right here for you give me about a week to make that happen and then on the top half the pest program specific training documents if we click on that page you're going to get all the programs listed and there's spotted lantern fly and lo and behold, if we scroll down a bit, Trapping and Visual Surveys by State has a user manual and a quick reference. And this user manual is going to give you a little bit of feedback on what to enter in each layer that's uh, that's got data enabled. And the quick reference is supposed to give you kind of like a cheat sheet out in the field if you want to use it that way. So make sure that you bookmark this main mobile data collection tools website and come back to it often as things are added there. The second link I gave you is to this training quiz. And I give you this link early because it's okay with me if you want to open that up, if you have the ability or the room on your monitors, um, you can have that open and answer the questions as we talk through this. The important thing is this third question, was, which asks for your email address. And so you want to type that in carefully, because when you submit your quiz, it will send you an automated email response that says, you completed this training. So that could be helpful for your supervisor. Maybe you want to add it to um, your list of accomplishments for the quarter that you report up. Maybe you just like a file that that tells you what you've what you've done training wise somewhere um, or put it on your wall, whatever, whatever back pocket you want to put it in. 
um, but it will send you that automated response if you put this email in carefully. And the quiz helps me out. It helps make sure that what I'm telling you is, is hitting you and, and sinking in a little. And so it's really meant to be, I make them as easy as possible, but meant to be kind of a little knowledge check in along the way. So feel free to open that up and definitely um, be sure to complete that quiz as soon as things are fresh in your mind and you're ready to do that. So those two links are really important. So what are we going to talk about today? I sort of, I'm going to give you a little visual. This, this young lady's got a pile of books, and that's kind of what I, I think of you all as the young lady. Um, you, you probably piled the big books at the bottom. Maybe this is survey protocol, more complex things that you need to study and know about. And then the smaller books kind of build knowledge, how to use that mobile app. Um, we have a video series on that on that mobile data collection tools website. So check that out. Maybe you're looking at some other processes here and the, all these books kind of pile up. And so I think today here, we're this top blue book. Uh, we're the, the very last kind of piece of the puzzle that should put that learning all together so that you, um, you really feel comfortable entering data in this field maps application. So just a quick analogy, um, I can help with some of this not all of this. And again, I'll point you to Matthew Travis as your SLF multi-state coordinator for survey protocol. Another person you might reach out to if you need some help on that is Erica Wiley. She's really taking the lead in documenting how to use these apps according to applying survey protocol. And I know she's, she's, really, um, she's really helpful for that kind of stuff. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to spend about um, probably the next 40 minutes or so going over these objectives, and then I'll open it up for questions. I'd like to, because we have at the next hour um, training on the SLF property assessment map, I'd like to leave the last 10 minutes as a break in between in case you plan on attending both. So I want you to be able to plan for those 10 minutes at the end of this hour to go ahead and run off and have your bio break, grab your water. Uh, maybe you need to check on a, a kid or a process that you've got going. So that's the plan timing wise. Objectives for today, we're going to talk a little bit about this application we're using, the ArcGIS Field Maps application how to sign into it. We have um, an official map and a training map. So how to sign in so that you're in the right map is important. Um, using that disconnected workflow as the, the app was designed and some of the some of the steps there. The layers that are held in this map and the data forms associated. And then we'll close up with some caution areas. Hopefully by the time we get to caution areas, we've covered a lot of them. So this will maybe be a little quick review of what to be especially careful of. So the ArcGIS field maps application, we do have a user guide there on that web page to look for. There were live offerings in the past as well, but there are now 10 self-paced videos, a little video series. And actually, if you haven't completed that, I would highly recommend that you do so. Even if you feel like you pretty much get how field maps works, it's just a good little check-in to make sure you feel comfortable, confident, ready to go. And just as a reminder, that is on that mobile data collection tools web, web page. So that's another reason to keep that bookmarked. When you tap to open that field maps application, the first time you'll see something that looks like this. And you have the option to sign in with ArcGIS Online or sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. And here at PPQ, we are always going to choose that enterprise option. Um, hopefully, uh, you can see that little red box. Maybe it should be a little deeper red. But we're always going to tap Enterprise. That Enterprise portal is protected, FedRAMP moderate secure, and we can enter PII safely and responsibly. So we, we always go into Enterprise. That's where our map is hosted. Now, after you tap that, you'll get an option. Really, you'll get these bottom two options the first time. It'll say, do you want to specify a new URL? or scan code. And we're going to tap specify a new URL. And the first time you do this, it will open the keyboard and you'll have to very carefully manually type that in. And where the official map is hosted is this URL here. And this snapshot here is showing I've come in before and entered that 
new URL. And so then Field Maps is held on to that URL for me. So now coming in the second time, all I have to do is tap that URL, and that's what it's going to use to sign in. So the first time you'll just see these two bottom two, but after that, you should see your options up here just to tap. So the options that I showed you, really, I only showed you this option for entering official data. I'm going to give you a couple boxes here just to show you the difference between these two URLs. So this top URL is our official data collection enterprise portal. This is where you enter real, I'm, put, I'm making air quotes here, real data for SLF. And it's maps.mrp.usda, et cetera. My team, the end user tools team, makes a copy of the official map just for us to play around in. But this copy or training map, training version, has to be hosted in a stage portal so that it is not mistaken for an official data collection tool. So it's really helpful, but the thing we have to pay really close attention to is we don't want to enter training or play data in our official MRP portal and vice versa. We don't want to enter official data in a training map in the stage portal. So this dash STG, you want to just kind of think of that as stage. And there's some ways for us to pay attention to this now that we're aware that a training map is held in a different portal. Number one, if you are in doubt, sign out. When in doubt, sign out is the best policy. But if you are signed into a training map, there's some really good signs. The map itself is titled with all caps training in the beginning of the title. The little thumbnail says training. The base maps are kind of a uh, light gray canvas. They're not very pretty. There are no imagery there. I'll show you what I mean when I show you um, a demonstration because today I will be using a training version to demonstrate to you, which is appropriate because I'm going to enter play data. It's not real. So I'll show you what that looks like. But the real takeaway is just to be sure you're in the right URL when in doubt, sign out and be sure that you do not enter training data in an official map and vice versa. So that's a big takeaway. And that's a quiz question. So um, if you're following along with the quiz, that's your answer. Um, the disconnected workflow. The ArcGIS Field Maps application is specifically designed inherently to operate while disconnected from Wi-Fi. And the way that that's done is outlined in a whole video training series as well. But I'm just giving you kind of the gist here today. So that just as a reminder, it does take a little preparation when you are connected to a reliable Wi-Fi source, you download a map area to your device, an area of interest that you want to work in. And then once that's tested and you feel good, you can disconnect from Wi-Fi and collect data in that area of interest, that map area on your device all day long come back at the end of the day, connect back to Wi-Fi, and synchronize your data that was collected. It's important to synchronize that data if you're in disconnected workflow in the morning and in the evening, because that synchronization is a two-way street. So it pulls in new data that's been collected in that area from that hosted map service and pushes your collected data that's collected in that downloaded map area back up. So it it goes both ways. So I highly encourage that. There's some good reasons. The training that we had on Tuesday, I attempted to show um, a layer well connected and found that I was having a hard time getting it to draw. And that was because our the stage portal was having some trouble that morning. Or it could have just been a lot of high traffic happening at the same time. But if I had downloaded the map, which I've done for us today, that would not affect me at all. So you're working while disconnected, it reduces the error or issue or delay in finding a good Wi-Fi connection and maintaining a good Wi-Fi connection. And secondly, in connecting back to that portal to that hosted map service. So it just really eliminates a lot of network issues when you're out in the field collecting data. I can't really emphasize it enough. It really keeps a lot of error out of, out of the picture. So I learned my lesson. Um, so first off, trapping. So as I said, this is both a trapping and visual map. But firstly, we'll talk about trapping. We're just kind of going in alphabetical order, to be honest. And I want to talk about a couple of trapping workflows as 
a workflow in that this is how the application views a trapping workflow. So try to apply it um, for what your survey protocol tells you. But basically in the ArcGIS field maps application, the first visit to a location is where you place the trap on the map. So it records your GPS location and it places a symbol on the map for that location. Also, the data that's collected on that first visit includes an install date, which infers that on that first visit, a trap was installed. And then all future visits to that same location are recorded based on that one location. You'll select that symbol on the map, and then a, a trap activity is recorded as an edit. So all future visits are recorded as trap activities on a table that's related to that first place a trap visit. Now there's one kind of complication that sometimes comes up um, that, that can confuse some people and that's when you maybe have to relocate a trap. So the proper way to do that, you might think this through in your brain anyway, would be you visit the original trap location, the trap you want to move, and you'll have to record a trap activity. And that trap activity is remove. This already is where a lot of people are a little bit like, well, if I remove the trap, shouldn't that symbol also disappear from the map? And no, the symbol will stay, and this is correct. Completing the step of, of a trap activity of remove is recording the last activity for that location. It's the entire history of that trap recorded and retained. So the symbol on the map should stay, but the last activity recorded should be removed. And then once that's done, you kind of follow, you know, my dotted line, physically move the trap to the new location, and you begin that workflow again of placing the trap. And so the relocated trap sometimes gets a little confusing where people are looking for it to remove and it does not actually work that way. And that's correct. So let's have a look at that real quick. I'm gonna give you a view of my PPQ iPad here. This is a PPQ iPad. I don't have a OtterBox case on it. It gives me glare, but I'm just gonna say, please do make sure that your iPad's not naked like mine and make sure it's protected. And you can see I've got all the field applications here loaded automatically. I'm going to choose field maps. And because I signed in previously, it saved my sign in. And more than that, it went all the way into where I was in the map I was using last. So I'm going to hit back and I'm going to do that twice to the main maps page. And just in case, I'm going to point out a couple things. I know that I signed into the stage portal. And if I was unsure, I would open my profile, slide that up a bit, and sign out. I, I'm pretty sure, though, and I'll show you why. Number one, I know I just signed into the stage portal. But you can see all these on-device offline areas all begin with the word training. And there's also a group down here that only exists on the stage or training portal, PPQ EUT or end user tools training group. And this group holds all of the training maps. So if you are a member of this group, you will have the view of all training versions of all, all of our programs. I happen to download offline areas for our for our training today for trapping and visual. So I actually have that on the main page already hanging out here for me as an offline area. Not only is the title started with caps, all caps training, but you see that little thumbnail has training as well. And if I tap on that, I, I have a, a training title here reserved for in view. So at any stage, I can keep asking myself, am I in the right map? obviously training map. I downloaded an area around Winchester, Pennsylvania, and that's going to take a moment to load now, um, now that I've come back into it. But you can see even here all the way into my, I named this area Winchester, Pennsylvania streets, but we still have that map title here and I can still see I'm in a training map. So I'm good. I'm ready to start adding data. A few things I want to point out. This is your sync button. Now that I have a downloaded app map area, that sync button is sitting here waiting for me. It's an arrow in and an arrow out. This is the layers menu, which will show you which layers you have available. We have three here in this map. We have visual, trap, 
and site plans. And since we're going to talk about trap sites, I'm going to go ahead and turn that layer on. And if I wanted to see the site plans layer, that's a reference layer I could turn on as well. I'm not going to do that right now. We'll do that in a minute. I'm going to close that up and then in this three dot or overflow menu, have a look at the legend, which could be really helpful. So the legend is going to show me the symbols on the map for those that I've enabled as visible. And remember, we only enabled visual and trap sites. So those are the two we're, that we're shown here. And we can see the visual surveys have some options and the trap sites have some options. I'm going to close that up. Lastly, in this overflow menu, there's a new feature called the markup layer. This markup layer is really just a markup layer. It's like your own notes layer. And two things I just want to point out, if you choose to use the markup layer to add notes for your area, number one, it is not an official data collection layer. So be careful typing notes in there that maybe should be in the main data form, not an official data collection layer. And secondly, it actually lives on your device. It's like your own personal notebook. So if it needs to be shared, you'll have to figure out how to share that markup layer or put that data in another location. So just be a little careful with that markup layer. All right, so let's say we want to add data. In order to add data, we tap this add button and that opens up the options either visual or trapping. Again, this is because we have both of those layers enabled and we want to do trapping today. That's what we're learning first. And so we're going to go ahead and choose the option here for trap sites, which is current. That's, as you notice, the only option here for entering data. It's a current trap. And then that opens our data form. Gray asterisks follow fields that are required, so you see some of those. Habitat doesn't have a gray asterisk, meaning it's an optional field to enter. And we just start entering that data. Now, I'm not seeing GPS um, show up here, and I'll tell you that's because I'm in Colorado. But I really wanted to show you um, data collection in Pennsylvania, and so that's what I'm doing. I'm never going to see that little blue dot, and this little crosshairs doesn't turn blue because I'm not in Pennsylvania. Um, but I think there, the strength of this for the, your reference layers and everything else is, is probably helpful. So I'm just going to let you know I'm not meeting GPS accuracy because I'm not in this location. So I can move this anywhere I want, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to install a trap here at this intersection and then add a point. And you can see by adding the point, it went ahead and gave me that symbol for a current trap. And so I'm just going to go ahead and again, I'm going to fill this out for the sake of showing you tap, choose, tap, choose, tap, use the keyboard to enter data. It doesn't follow survey protocol. I, I totally know that but I'm just gonna show you how to use it by entering something. You can see the schedule, schedule status is current, which is what we chose to begin with. And site comments here, I'm gonna write test just to make sure that that's clear. Now I've skipped this install date, but I wanna show you if I hit submit on this data form, I'm gonna get a message that tells me that one attribute failed, or really it's referring to an attribute meaning a field failed. And if this was a long form and I hit view, it would pull that up for me. But as we can see, it is already at the bottom and that required word messaging came up in red for us. So it'll tell you if you're missing a field. If I tap that, it opens a calendar view. Now this is what messes me up quite a bit is I will accidentally tap a different date as I'm scrolling. And it has a handy dandy little today button. So if we tap on this blue today, you see it jumped us right back to today. So it timestamps you right back. So just know you can tap today. And then what I like to do is tap that field again to close it. And then that eliminates my calendar fat fingering, which I'm really, that happens to me a lot. And then you'll want to just go ahead and review your data. Does everything look correct? Well, we know it's not, but it's a Jenny style data entry. And then we're going to hit submit. And that's us placing the trap. And so we've placed the trap. Let's say we need to go back through and visit this trap. Well, I'm going to close this out and deselect it. But what I would do then to on a second visit or all future visits, let's say I'm coming back to monitor this trap in order to record that activity, I'm going to select that trap symbol on the map, which opens that data form. 
And then I'm going to choose this link button or scroll up to the bottom of this form and I'm going to find trap activities, which also has that link icon in order to open that related table and enter a trap activity. In order to do that, I'm just going to hit add and there's a new data form for the trap activity of that day. Again, the same rules apply. Required fields have those asterisks. I'm going to go ahead and fill this out. Jenny S. You probably want to fill out your full name or maybe initials are allowed. I'm going to put test. I'm going to make sure that says today and close that up. We have a pest status to fill out. I'll say undetermined. These fields are de defaulted to zero, but likely one of these needs to be edited and changed. You just tap on it and go ahead and change it. I'm going to leave that field sample taken as no, but if I want to change it to yes, you'll see a couple, you'll see one more question here asking you for the field sample ID. I'm going to change that back to no, and I think that's all I need to fill out on that. I'm going to hit submit. And there we go. I'll close that out. So let's say this is one of those that I want to move. Uh, relocate. Remember that workflow? What I need to do is enter an activity of remove. Let's try that just for the sake of seeing it. So select that trap, go to the activities table. We're going to add an activity. I'm going to put my name in again. The activity will be remove. My comments might say more than that, likely. Today, close that up pest status, still undetermined. And I'm going to say nothing more here because I'm removing this trap. And then I'll hit submit. And as you see, it just remains there, the symbol. But if we were to come back and have a look at this by selecting it and open up the activities table, you can see the last activity is removed. So that's how it should really look if you're going to going to relocate a trap. And then I would go ahead and move to where I want it relocated and go ahead and add add button to to place a new trap. So that's the basics of trapping and another thing that you might sometimes come into uh, use is this pencil or edit. So if you have something selected, you can go ahead and hit edit, which will open that data form for editing. Be careful again when you do this and editing that form. Let's say maybe I mismeasured or I realized my ruler was off or whatever. Let's say that was really eight. Then I'm going to have to make that edit and submit that edit. All right. So let's have a look back at where we were in our workflow. Get back to this. There we go. Uh, so we talked about all of the trapping. What about visual? So you saw when we had visual open that that's a, a layer we can turn on and off. You're going to want to make sure that layer is turned on in the layers menu. So let's have a look at that real fast too. Back to this guy. I'm going to close out those data forms and remember the layers menu here. And remember the visual surveys layer needs to be toggled to on and that's good. And Remember, we could see a legend here for the visual surveys. We've got positive, negative, undetermined, cool. So we know that layer is on, and then we tap the add button to add to that layer. And again, we still have trap sites here. Remember that layer's on too. So we're gonna go ahead and choose from our visual surveys, which one of these is being entered. I'm gonna say negative. Then we got the same thing. We've got a data form. We also have the same thing in that I don't have a point placed and remember that's because I'm in Colorado and this is a Pennsylvania location. So I'm, I am going to add the point there and you see that symbol pulls up right there is negative. I'm going to go ahead and fill this form out. That's my name. Site name I'm going to do a really horrible job of because I don't know survey protocol there. You can see it pulled the host in. I'm going to give it a DBH. I'm going to say it's a test point. I'm going to make sure this date is today and then close that up. And then we have pest status details. And you see it pulled in negative, which is what we said from the start. And then we have a couple questions here on egg mass counts. I'm going to say two. Again, I don't know what should be here. And then densities are all listed as unpopulated as default. 
but if you tap that field, you'll get all the options there that should be entered and you can choose a different one. Um, just for the Sega demo, I'll choose a different one there. Uh, and then we go ahead and check over our data form. Everything looks correct and I'm going to hit submit. And that is all there is to a visual survey. But again, you do have the ability to edit and here's that little pencil button here while this visual survey symbol is selected and I or I could scroll to the bottom where I'll find that option as well edit this training version does have a delete option here you won't have that in your official map deleting is very dangerous officially but in the practice and play world we don't mind you deleting so you'll see delete here in the training map but you'll only be able to edit in the main official map finally the last layer you I want to talk about for you is the site plane plans layer and that user manual that I pointed out to you page eight has a lot of detail on the purpose of the site plans layer in this map but the gist of it is that it is provided for reference only the information might be helpful when selecting a location for trapping or visual surveys and it is defaulted in off so it's not visible and you have to go to that layers menu to turn it on and selecting a parcel opens property information for you two things it's not editable in all ways but there are two edits that might be necessary one we call a geometry edit what i mean by that is a change to the shape or additional shapes and those have to be requested through a supervisor to a field gis specialist so if you see that a shapes off in a parcel or an additional parcel needs to be added that's a geometry edit and the second one is the attributes themselves and these are not editable this is really for real only for reference in this map but you can edit site plans uh, parcel fields in another map and that's the property assessment map so we won't see that today or we won't see that here but we will see that in the next hour in the property assessment map in this map there is no editing so let's have a look at that on the ipad too and we'll close out of everything we've been looking at i'm going to go to the layers menu i'm going to turn on the site plans layer i'll exit out of that and you can see all these colored parcels and if we zoom way in let's look at that trap we placed that trap then is located in this pink parcel and if we needed to we can select that parcel and when selected it's got that blue kind of cyan blue surrounding it and you can see that form opened up with all of the information on that property it is not editable you don't see any edit option down here at the bottom there's no pencil so it's really just here for your reference but boy isn't that helpful so we're we're trapping here on this parcel we see that access was granted it says yes probably something you want to look at before you start trapping. <laughs> um, obviously, again, survey protocol is something you want to follow. But this is how to use that site plans layer. All right, let's talk about some caution areas. Again, I'm hoping we really covered these. But remember, we've got two URLs for signing in. We've got a real in quotes, the official map for official data and we have a training version and the training version is what we are in today so be just be careful you're in the right one when in doubt sign out sign back in make sure you're in the right spot and the site plans layer is not editable it's really just there for reference if you feel that it needs an edit either geometry or the fields involved. The geometry edits are done by a field GIS specialist by request. The attributes or fields can be edited in another map, the property assessment map. Be sure that you're using that disconnected uh, workflow. If at all possible, it's gonna really set you up for success. We also saw the submit button have a fail and give us messaging on what was missing. It only fails if there is a required field missing. So it's going to make sure that you do, in fact, fill out everything you need to. Be careful with data collection. Uh, I don't mean this to be offensive. Just as a reminder, I can't tell you how many times I've looked, just gave it one more glance that, and found a typo or something silly that I thought, why did I do that? Um, so just always take that extra second, give it another walk through with your mind, think about your, your uh, entries before you hit that submit button. 
the daily data sync is something that really is related. Maybe that should be up here with the disconnected uh, workflow. But if you're using a disconnected workflow, you do want to do that daily data sync twice a day. Make sure that you're not holding information on your device that could be used uh, for daily monitoring and reporting and decision making. So just make sure that you're doing that every day, morning and evening uh, before you go out and in the evening. The markup layer, don't forget that markup layer. It's a new feature of this application and just be careful with it. Um, I would love to hear how you're using it. It's brand new. It's not something I can think of a million ways to use it and also a million ways that it might go wrong. So just remember those two rules. Make sure that you're not using it to record data that is official. It is not an official data layer for collection. And secondly, it really does live on your device. So it's it's like your own little notebook. If uh, just remember that it's only on the device unless you share it out. So those two things. Now we've talked about a lot of stuff and I've, I've given you some names, but I thought I would gather you some help resources if whatever we've talked about today isn't enough. And remember your spotted lanternfly program protocol, even additional training um, requests and things like that should go through Matthew Travis and Erica Wiley is certainly taking the lead in trying to help um, support these mobile apps as well. If you have an iPad issue or really any PPQ device issue, so iPhone as well, you want to open a ticket with CECIT. They support our devices. Problems accessing the correct maps or maybe the application itself isn't behaving as you expect. Of, of course, go to your supervisor first, but your supervisor may reach out to the local field GIS specialist to help support that. And um, we have an email here that's answered by a group which helps with portal access, the webgis.connect at usda.gov. And, and finally, all things and user tools training, bookmark that web page, visit it often, have a look at it, um, go there first if you can. Um, and another little ping for you, don't forget to take this quiz. We talked over quite a bit. It might have felt like a little bit of an information um, fire hydrant. Sometimes they do that. But use this quiz to kind of review and make sure that you did walk away with the main points that you need to, or at least that I think you need to. Um, so don't forget to take that quiz. And um, hopefully, I think we've covered these objectives, but we talked a little bit about the app itself, signing into those two different portals, the official versus training the disconnected workflow. We went over the three layers that are present, the two that you can edit and the site plans that is not editable, editable here. And we also talked or hopefully reviewed caution areas. So that is really what I wanted to share with you all today. And I want to give you my information, take some accountability for the training that I've thrown at you today. You can reach out to me at any time, and this is this is my information. But we have a few minutes. Um, I know I really rambled right through that. Are there any questions on anything that I've shared, or is there anything you'd like to see again, or anything you'd like to see more of? Jen. Yes. This is Nelson Roberts. Before we do any of this, we will need to create the field maps, right? Um, so are you asking if you have the application to start with? No, we need to, to before we go to any of these places, a visual survey or whatever, mm -hmm. put the field maps on the iPad for that area, right? I would highly recommend it. So you can use, you can, thank you for the question. That's a great one. You can operate well connected without any prep at all, but you set yourself up for some network issues out in the field. Um, I know sometimes you think you're working well connected. Maybe a lot of times people with iPhones think this way and they just prefer to go on out there and collect data live in the map. Um, but your phone doesn't always maintain the kind of connection you need. 
and there's really two connections happening here. There's a Wi-Fi connection, and then there's this portal server connection if you remain connected. So I really do recommend using that disconnected workflow. And I'll point you to, if you, it, of course we can uh, dive deeper, but I'm gonna pull this website right back over here at you um, and let you know that there is under foundations or if you just search field maps it walks you through as you can see there's a whole video on disconnected workflow and then a whole video on how to download that map area so uh, that's one reason why i always say if you haven't done this little video series it's worth doing. Um, it's it's 10 videos and I'll say it probably takes about an hour to just run through them. So I would point you to these to give you some, uh, you know, in depth how to's. It takes a little time to download a map area. But then once you've done it, you can use it the whole year that area is just sitting there on your um, iPad just like I use today. So that's a long answer for yes, I recommend it. <laughs> Well, I've done quite a bit of the mm -hmm. visual surveys, and each one of them, uh, not each particular place, but each area, I have made a field map. And okay. So I can go back and click any time and see when I did it, and, and it's, it's, so it's still showing on each one of those field maps. And some field maps may have eight or ten places that I did a visual survey. So I did it right, in other words. Sounds like, sounds like to okay. me. Good job. Okay. Yeah, good right. job. Right. Thank you. Anybody else with any questions? Wow, you guys are so well behaved and for such a big group. I sure do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we'll just call, we'll end this for today. Thank you so much for your participation and for being so responsible and trying to make sure you have all the information at your fingertips on how to collect this data. So I'll wish you good luck on that. <music>